Halo Infinite's campaign will have a playable space larger than Halo 4 and 5's campaigns combined, which now sounds amazing at first, but when you think about it, a lot of games have actually struggled with this large scale world, even games within the Halo universe. But what could Halo Infinite's campaign do to improve on these issues? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you're new to the channel, miss any content from me recently, make sure to tap subscribe over here, people. Make sure you keep yourself up to date with everything going on with Halo. Now, yes, we have known this fact of the large scale that's going to be with Halo Infinite's campaign. And it sounds pretty freaking awesome. I mean, I really applaud 343 for really pushing the hardware limits of the Xbox Series X and PC, it sounds like, because at least before we saw from the gameplay demo, it really was pushing it. I've played rather large scale games as well, like Grand Theft Auto. I mean, ODST actually did this a little bit as well. I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk as well, for the open world kind of aspect. And yeah, Halo Infinite's not gonna be exactly open world. It's gonna fall in line with the same kind of steps as ODST, where it's gonna start out small and then open up with the ability to backtrack. But there is one thing I'm super concerned about Halo Infinite's campaign, and that is the amount of things to do in the world. So here's a freeze frame of Halo Infinite's map from the gameplay trailer that we saw back in July. Now this is just a quick little screenshot to kind of show you what all the different tasks that you have available. You obviously have these different kind of missions highlighted in red right here. You even have these little bases right here, golf base, echo base, which seem to be kind of you know, secure locations and things like that. And, uh, but basically all we saw for that gameplay trailer guys was this area right here from here to here. That's all we had to see. Now it's really great to see that pretty much everywhere you look around, you'll be able to go there. That's kind of been the mantra from 343 that if you see it, you can go, you can go there pretty much, which is really awesome to hear. My biggest concern though is obviously, yeah, you can figure this out right here. Like it only took them like what, five, five to 10 minutes possibly to go from here to here. But look at the other areas of the map as well. I mean, obviously I'm sure not everything is selected, but look at this area like right here, between like Echo Base and the Green Spire. This is like twice the distance that we have compared to like right here. So what are you gonna do going from, you know, Echo Base, probably like a place where you can set up shop and get your equipment all ready to go to go back out in the battle. But then what are you gonna do between there and Green Spire? Just walk aimlessly through the fields or say for example in Halo Infinite maybe you already have this green spire spot located and you just finished the you know gun battery west uh, objective so the next nearest objective to you is like the tower or uh killing this like looks like an assassination kind of thing which is like three or five times like the distance that we saw within the campaign that's a lot of space of nothing but this recent quote from joseph stain who has played the campaign multiple times said this within their most recent development update do i explore off the golden path sold that banished war base guarding the valley pass Follow a flight of Forerunner Sentinels into an unexpected cavern? Rescue a squad of Marines dug and desperate halfway up a mountain? Or do I keep pulling the mainline story thread that feels epic and intimate in the exact same time? Now actually if we refer back to this image right here, this is actually a really interesting thing saying Marine Rescue K right up in here. So does that mean like these kind of missions that he was talking about are more just like actual side missions rather than just like random events that happen within the world? They're not necessarily generated sequences. This is the green spire right here that, you know, banished base guarding the valley below. But my main concern is what are you going to do in those times in between the missions when you're traveling between these two locations? This was a major issue with ODST's campaign where yes, it's really fun. Don't get me wrong. I love ODST's campaign. You know, the world is, you know, very visually appealing. Uh, it's a very interesting world as well. And it fits the narrative very well within ODST, but it's rather empty and there really isn't a whole lot to do besides, you know, going from A to B missions and selecting, you know, searching for audio logs. I mean, yeah, there might be that random platoon of brutes, maybe even hunters or something like that walking by, but really that just kind of slows you down from getting A to B rather than doing something fun and interesting that might kind of add to your gameplay experience. Now, I don't necessarily fault ODST for that because it was meant to be more of a fun add-on spin-off kind of campaign DLC that got kind of 
put into a full-fledged game. Halo Infinite is trying to be a full-size game. Oftentimes in open-world games like GTA or Cyberpunk or also kind of like Destiny as well with their semi-open world levels where they place these random platoons around the world and if you want to go kill them you can to get more ammo and get some resources that would help you progress further in the game. But that's more because they're like RPG-like elements within those games. Halo Infinite isn't an RPG, it's just a shooter. Really, because all the gunfights that we saw within the Infinite trailer is just kind of like that space in between stuff where you're going from your point where you're starting to the actual mission. And all the stuff that we saw with like the initial grunt fight, the part where you melee the elites, the part where those brutes drop in in front of you, that's all just kind of filler content that's kind of just supposed to jump in in front of you. Now, it's not actually going to be meaningful content and activities and things to do within the game. I have a feeling a lot of people are just going to speed run past that because they go, what's the point of me trying to spend all this time killing these brutes and elites when I can just drive right past them all and they, the AI won't track me down because I'm too far outside their range to where I just go straight to the mission. Though that one line from Joseph Stain mentioning saying, follow a flight of Forerunner Sentinels into an unexpected cavern, could this mean that it kind of takes you into like an unexpected like side mission of a side mission random activity thing that kind of gets randomly generated that kind of caused some kind of event much like say like public events in destiny unless there are some really cool story elements being told within these side quests or maybe they kind of lead you to like some new kind of cutscene or something interesting to look into I don't really see much point of having to battle all these different AI characters when you're going from A to B why not just get there as soon as possible because there's really nothing in it for you besides losing ammo, taking damage, and ultimately just padding game time. This is going to be the biggest hurdle that 343 is going to have to get over when it comes to the campaign gameplay. Are there going to be meaningful things for you to do while you're going from A to B in the game or is it going to just kind of feel like random skirmish encounters that really don't impact your gameplay experience besides just slowing you down? Because from what we've seen right now that kind of seems to be the current course of things. Now this extended dev time that we have with the delay until fall of 2021 one does lead me to believe that it probably would give him more time to flesh out the campaign experience a little bit more to give you some more things to do beside between traveling for side missions and mainline story missions as well but until then we'll just have to wait so once we get some more halo infinite news guys i guarantee you i will share it on this channel if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me recently check out the videos on the screen or over here i got a link to all my news and informational videos you have been out of the loop for the last few days or so so thank you so much for watching I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.